Good morning. It's March 26th. Mr. Longo Studio Art One. It would be opening day had this uh, pandemic not been happening, but there's still ways to celebrate that. At least it's nice out. So I'm sure to be, I'm going to definitely find my way outside a little later. Um, so today we're going to do some more watercolor work. Um, what you need is a little water, paper towel, or tissue or something like that. Your watercolor tray, make sure you clean off the plastic side so you've got clean area to work with. And you should also get your white charcoal pencil that you have. Now, those of you that do not have these things, you can use something else to color with. You can still practice these things. If you don't have a white charcoal pencil, try using either an eraser or you could possibly use a white color pencil. Maybe even a white crown would work. Okay, so I'm trying to be flexible here. Um, if you don't have anything of color, consider maybe going out and grabbing something on the cheap. Like you can go to Dollar Tree and get this stuff. Okay, so let's see. What we're going to do is we're going to see if we can't lighten up this first, okay, with some techniques that I learned from this Mako person, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it almost look like the appearance of clouds by lightening up what we already have. Now, what that means is we're going to try and reactivate the watercolor that's there, and then we're going to use the paper towel and soak it up. Let's see how that works. Okay, so I'm just going to use my water on my brush, okay? And what I'll do is I'll, I'll paint some of that on it. You can see it's kind of coming back to life a little bit. It's waking up a little bit. This watercolor, like, it's kind of neat. You can rework it pretty well. So I'm going to work like that area right there, maybe a little lower. And when you put water on there, just make sure you spread it as quick as you can because it'll saturate. Now let's see if this works. If it doesn't, there's a plan B. Okay, so I'm going to take this paper towel here, and let's see if it takes any of it up. Hmm. No, it's not taking it up. So we're going to let that dry before we deal with that again. And what we'll do right now is we will work on the bottom. So we already had something there. Let's put something down here. Okay, we're going to use maybe two or three colors for this. Okay, so I'm going to start with something light. And that's what I suggest you do too. Start with something light. I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with yellow, which my uh, my daughter got some green in yesterday. She she loves watercoloring. It's probably her favorite, and um, she just lost her mind when she saw mine. Just about. So you know, reactivate your yellow. Use the tray. So let me show you what I'm doing. So I'm setting it up right there. Okay. And from there, you don't have to go straight from the tray. You can take the color, then dip your brush in the water if you want to dilute it a little bit. I'm okay with some pretty strong color here. So let's put that down. So wet on dry. We already have some stuff down, so I'm just going to work it right over. And what's nice about what, what we're trying to do here is get a nice, strong, solid line. If I work wet over wet, which I guess I'll show you, you'll see what happens. It's going to bleed out. Okay, so when you work wet on dry, you can get really nice, clean edges out of things, okay? So keep that in mind when you're coloring, maybe on your project, and it's t and you have two colors that are coming really close together. Maybe you should just wait on one of them, just so they don't bleed together, okay? So I'm going to paint this down a little bit so I can give part of it time to dry. And we'll go over some of it, and I'll show you what that, you know, how it bleeds, um, which can be a good thing if that's like what you want out of the technique. Otherwise, not so much. Now, this is the part where I'm gonna hide in the do now question, I guess. So the do now question for today is the place that you researched. What's the weather today? 60 and sunny, 12 and rainy. So that's the do now question. The place that you researched, what is the, uh, what's the weather today? Okay, so we got that yellow. Now let me just show you the bleed. Okay, so I'm gonna get some, I'll get some red. Okay, let's get some red. And like, let's work it 
Now, I could still get it nice and precise if I want to. Okay. But what's going to happen is when you're working red on red, you could you can definitely bet on some bleeding happening. So what I mean by that is like the edges look kind of frayed. Okay. They don't look as clean as they could. Okay. So I'm just gonna kind of get them working together, and uh, you know I'll have it bleed down a little bit so it creates like a nice orange little gradient. And if you're having trouble with gradients, like going from light to dark, you need to lessen up on the color and get a little heavier on the water part. I'm seeing a lot of that where people are just so heavy on the color, not working in the water, and um, it's not really working too well, in my opinion. Now this, I'm just going more for the color right now. I'm getting some... Again, it's like nice and bright. But that kind of blending thing, that's really nice too. That's like one of the more impressive things about the uh, using watercolor. Okay. And I know I'm not doing much of anything important, but I'm, you know, it's it's more about the technique. The wet on dry. Now we'll try something a little more focused on the other side. Okay. Let me see if I gave this enough time. I'm, I might have given it enough time dry. You know what? Just to be safe, I'm going to go right over it. Okay? I'm going to use the white charcoal pencil. And what I'll do, and that's working pretty nice. What I like about the white charcoal pencil is it will lighten it. It will lighten it. You don't even have to press hard, but it won't lose the color either. So you're going to see a bit of blue on it. So what I'm going to do... Is I'm going to press hard towards the top and I'll lighten up as I go down and I'm not going to go down too far because of that wet area okay and do you see that separation there that's pretty nice so if you do go too dark two things you could do you could try and sop it up you could try and reactivate it but this is working pretty darn good too what you can also do with this is you could put in little light accents into your work okay and it won't lighten it up all the way but it'll take a little bit off it'll create a tint that can be pretty nice okay again I'm kind of just going abstract here I'm not really making a whole lot of sense on that one I was going for something it just didn't happen okay but on this one we'll make it happen okay so what I'll do for this one is we're gonna do some mountains Okay, I'm going to start with red. Okay, now I'm going to try it like um like it is in the video from uh, Mako, the video that I posted yesterday of the professional. So we'll start with some red. I'm going to get that on my plastic here. I'm going to go with a light red, so I'm going to keep it easy on the water and or the the color and go heavy on the water, so it's like a light red. And you can also mix other colors into it, but do your mixing on the tray. So, draw the top first. Nice. And then I'm going to try and do this quickly so I can get right to it. And get it looking pretty nice and smooth. Working back and forth. Don't like, don't like press too hard with the brush. Okay. Ooh, that looks nice. What would really be nice is if I could get a little bit darker on the out on the bottom. That would be good. Okay, so that's my... You now I'm going to raise this up a little bit more. Get a little bit more of a mountainous kind of feel to it. So just put that outline in and then fill it out real fast. So that part's drying. Okay. Now we're going to go <clears throat> with the same thing, but a little darker on the other side. Okay, so more color. Still a lot of water, but more color for sure. Okay. And I'm just dumping that onto my palette here. And if you want to maybe uh, maybe work a little, if you want it to be a different tone of red, why don't you clean off your brush, get a little bit of brown, just a little bit of brown. Mix that in with your red, and it'll change like the style of, you know, change up the red a little bit. It'll be a little bit browner. Okay, so let's do our second set of mountains. 
it'll go like this, and then we can fill it in. Go back to the well. Let's get it to go right over it because it's darker. So I don't want to see that line. There we go. Okay. Doing pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. So what we'll do right now is why don't we add a bit of blue. We're going to do kind of like a lake effect there. All right. So we're going to do kind of what we did over here with the red. We're going to send it through in streaks. And um, so get your blue activated. We're going to use more water again. We don't want to go super duper heavy. And this blue apparently is very vibrant. So I'm, I didn't need a lot of color. It's so dark. Okay, and what we're going to do is horizontal streaks, and we're going to leave a little bit of the orange behind, especially in the middle. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go like this. And let's go the other way. It's like your mini masterpiece. What I was really hoping to do for this was our acrylic paints and Bob Ross. And if you want to use anything else, like acrylic paints or anything, for the project, be my guest. Okay, I gave you what I was able to give you on short notice, you know what I mean? So if it's not what you want to use, if you have the means and the ability to use acrylic paint, first off, that is something I am masterful with. I'm, I'm a quite good painter, not to toot my own horn, but um, drawing with pencil and painting, they are the things that I thrive at. Okay, so I like that reflection we got right there so far. Okay, maybe some, maybe just a touch of like a darker color in there too, like a, like darker than the orange, maybe just a little bit of red. So I'm going to get my red, I'm going to mix that, just a watery red, just a little bit of red in there might be nice. Just a little bit. Might make a little bit of purple. I just didn't like how it was just orange. You know what? I'm just going to work some water on it now. Get them to play nicely, but the orange and the red. Maybe even soften up the red a bit, which is not a bad thing. And then we'll work some white over it a little bit. So I'm going to do the same thing out here. Might create a little bit of purple, but that never hurt anybody. Okay. And what we'll do again, we'll work in some uh, work in some white a little bit. Beautiful. Okay, let's work in a darker color. We're going to go purple, and we're going to create some shadows there. Now, before you do that, let's just work some water right over this big mountain, okay? So I want you to have a gloss to it, okay? And now let's do the purple. So let's do a little wet on wet and see what happens when we go red and purple. So let's just create some... Some little shadows. So we'll go right up along the line there. And what's nice is it might be kind of, it'll be nice and smooth. Okay. For starters, it might even get a little, like, of that watery breakup, which is kind of nice. So let's darken it up a little more, especially towards the bottom. Okay. And then I'm just going to leave some of those streaks behind. And uh, by no means, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. This is not like my forte. This is not something I feel most comfortable with. So if you want to watch someone who is very comfortable with this, watch that Mako video I put up yesterday. That person is pretty outstanding at this. Okay? Now the last thing I'm going to do, the last thing I'm going to do before I get the white out is I'm gonna go back to my brown red mix that I used to make the big mountain. Just work a little bit of that into our uh, back mountain there. So. A little more than I wanted to add, but you know what? It looks pretty darn good. Okay. Now, you can wait on this, but I don't have that luxury. So I'm just going to go ahead and work my white in right now, okay, especially down here in the water. And again, it's not going to make like the world's biggest difference. 
and hopefully if it's not too wet it won't like rip through it or anything it'll make a bit of a difference but you could put in some some white lines and it won't again it won't come out white it'll come out light so that's kind of nice okay it'll just dull it out and brighten it a little bit so it'll come off a little more watery now what you could do here is we could do some work along the edge of this mountain maybe that's where the light's coming from I like that and again it's not making white it's making like this light lavendery color which is really cool okay gives it a little more flavor so let's just finish off with a couple lines here Okay, that's good. Um, send me your progress today. Again, this is the assignment, doing watercolor exercises. I see some of you are working on your project already. Right. That's great and all, but I'm being pretty uh, clear on what I want each day when I'm grading, all right? If, um, if it doesn't get done, it won't get graded. And let's keep in mind, too, marking period is going to be done in two weeks, okay? So uh, if things are have been quiet with you or you need some help or anything like that, you got to get moving, okay? So, that was fun. Good way to start your day. Um, making something beautiful. And maybe you could do a little better job than I did on the first one, but uh, I'm excited to see what you guys did. Now, if you want to know what the do now question was, you got to go halfway into this video to find it. Uh, that's your attendance. That's not the assignment, though, okay? So, go ahead and do that, and... Uh, Get on the remind if you need to talk to me today. My hours are 8 to 10, noon to 2, and I'm probably done for the day at 4. All right, see you later.